Lots of countries have human rights problems, but North Korea is in a class by itself. It's comparable to, to the dictatorships of the 20th century, Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union. There are 80,000 to 120,000 people living in concentration camps in North Korea, being starved to death, being murdered on a regular basis, whole families kept together for their entire lives. There's nothing like it going on anywhere else in the world. President Trump has gone to extremes of one side or the other in talking to Kim Jong-un. He insults him. Little rocket man. But more recently, he's been calling him very honorable. And this is a disturbing thing in itself because Kim Jong-un is a dictator who has killed his own brother, killed his own uncle. So I think to call him honorable is to give him a legitimacy which he doesn't deserve at all and which is one of the main things he is seeking from these negotiations. I think Tr President Trump is trying to butter up Kim Jong-un. He's trying to soften him up because that's probably the way he does a real estate negotiation. You soften up the other guy, you smile at him, you make him feel good right up until the time when you stiff him or uh, slip a stiletto in his back. The problem with this is this isn't a real estate negotiation. This is a, this is a major encounter between two nations. We've had other negotiations in the past, other arms control negotiations where human rights have been brought in and they made a tremendous impact. The biggest example is when we negotiated nuclear reductions with the Soviet Union during the 1970s. Uh, the United States at that time insisted on having a human rights basket as part of the process. It led to a group of agreements called the Helsinki Accords which committed the Soviet Union to certain human rights guarantees at home. People in the Soviet Union seized on those guarantees and used them to demand changes in the system. And in the end, that whole process brought about more change than they did the nuclear negotiations themselves. And so, first of all, you can't have a change in North Korea so radical that they would give up their nuclear weapons unless they address the prison camps and the other human rights violations. Secondly, by agreeing to do that, by taking some steps in that direction, North Korea would give us the assurance that they really do intend to change. If it really ends up with North Korea denuclearizing, then this will turn out to have been a hugely important moment. But I think there's an equally large chance that we're going to have a photo op and then a breakdown of the process within a few weeks or months, in which case this will be yet another blip in what has been a long series of failed negotiations with North Korea.